Okay, everyone. So in this video, I'm going to go over uh, that reading you had to do from William Story's book about um, why do pressure groups influence the different branches of uh, U.S. government and what methods did they go on uh, go go about doing this? Is what I meant to say. What I'm going to do, though, I'm going to give you some more up-to-date examples of um, some of these activities. Uh, because obviously William Story's book was a little while ago. The reasons why. And the methods they use are much the same, just got some different examples. So we'll first of all go through the executive. This is mainly the presidency, but it's also his administration. So it's all the secretaries of state, it's the top civil servants. Um, it's not just the president himself, although one or two of these are specific to him. So the reasons why the executive is gets the attention, I suppose, of pressure groups, well, obviously, they set the agenda, the legislative agenda and the political agenda. Now, just think how much the agenda changed between Trump and Obama, or how it will probably change when Biden um, walked into the White House in January. Um, the administration, the presidency, obviously, deals with not just the legislative agenda, but also foreign policy, you know, um, think of the influence presidents have over foreign policy, which obviously is a big uh, feature. Uh, the appointments of key people into key positions, uh, regulations, uh, there's a whole range of different areas as to why the president is seen as being a, a target for pressure groups. And then if you want some examples of this, so for example, um, Regarding things like regulations, obviously Donald Trump rescinded, got rid of quite a lot of Obama's regulations on the environment with the Environment Protection Agency. And there's an article on Teams I put on there about how BP lobbied Trump and his administration over uh, watering down some environmental legislation. Uh, you have sometimes direct lobbying of the president. So the Hispanic pressure group La Raza, uh, this is the year before the 2012 election or the year of the 2012 election, Obama's, you know, 2012 election campaign. La Raza were quite upset about Obama because um, he'd been quite hard on for, on um, immigration. They demonstrated and called him the deporter in chief. They did eventually actually get access into the White House to actually meet some of the officials of the Obama administration to discuss uh, their concerns. Um, Pressure groups also get involved uh, regarding um, the executive over appointments. Um, I'll discuss the Supreme Court ones later on. That's probably the most obvious ones. But, you know, when the president is going to make an appointment to the Supreme Court, or even some of the lower federal courts, you often get um, abortion groups and anti-abortion groups will lobby him and also the senators to um, confirm or not confirm presidential choice. Uh, you might get something like the Association of Teachers for example, they'll often lobby um, both the Senate and the presidency over choice of education secretary. Uh, and this is true of quite a few of the secretaries of state. Um, other ways in which pressure groups might try to target the executive is obviously to make sure they get the right person elected. Obviously, pressure groups who favour the more liberal end of um, the of society, I suppose, they'll often campaign to help uh, Democrats get elected. They may donate money to Democrat candidates for presidency. And obviously those pressure groups who favour a more conservative direction do the same to get their person in. Because generally speaking, if they get someone who's either liberal or conservative on, into the presidency, then other things which they're interested in will probably follow. Um, it's a bit too soon to find out exactly who's been donating what in 2020, but I did discover there's a website called opensecrets.org. Uh, Las Vegas Sands, which I'm guessing is some kind of casino company, for example, was the top donor to Trump's campaign, $36 million. I know Walt Disney uh, Corporation was third or fourth on there. Um, so executive is important, um, and then you get all these pressure groups involved. And then just as a little aside, um, for the first time ever, I hear cats fighting outside, I've gone so mad in a minute. In terms of presidents getting involved, Donald Trump was the first president ever to attend the anti-abortion rally, which took place in Washington, I think it was in January, February time this year. This is an annual event, but presidents don't normally go. Donald Trump went to this event this year. You often get some pressure groups have annual dinners which the president will attend as well. Sometimes it's like a convention that no matter who the president is, they tend to attend. Um, so that happens sometimes. So, for example, I think the, the American um, 
Commerce Association. I think they have a regular dinner which the president usually attends. Um, so you get those as well. So that's that one right. Let me just sort out these cats and I'll finish off doing this. Okay then, so pressure groups and the Senate. There are some special reasons why pressure groups will target the Senate. Um, obviously, they're equal to the House of Representatives in passing legislation. So pressure groups will target senators, you know, lobbying them to vote for, <coughs> sorry, for or against uh, legislation. But they've also got some special powers the Senate as well. So, for example, um, listening to confirmation hearings over appointments to the Cabinet and Supreme Courts. Uh, they have the power of something called the filibuster, which we'll come to later on. Uh, in terms of foreign policy, the Senate approve or don't uh, treaties. Uh, so, again, pressure groups who have an interest in foreign affairs have a certain interest there with uh, the Senate. So, just to give some examples of pressure groups getting involved with the Senate, um, during the appointment of Supreme Court judges, uh, senators will often receive um, information as to about why they should or shouldn't appoint certain people. Often they'll get pro-life groups and, and, and um, pro-choice groups uh, be very much involved in trying to um, persuade senators to confirm or not potential appointments uh, to the Supreme Court. Um, when Elena Kagan was in the appointment process in 2000 and whatever year it was, 2010 I think it was, um, the National Rifle Association ran adverts against her, um, targeting certain senators um, to say that you know she shouldn't be appointed because she'll take away your Second Amendment rights and therefore tell your senator to vote against her. So you often get um, them involved around those sorts of issues. Um, in other issues, in terms of foreign affairs, um, APAC, A-I-P-A-C, it's a pro-Israeli pressure group. Uh, they're very much involved as well, very often. Um, obviously, they're interested in Israel and the Middle East in particular. They'll often run campaigns and try and persuade congressmen or, or senators, sorry, to, you know, uh, support or not certain things. So, for example, they weren't very happy with the Iran nuclear deal under Obama and they spent $20 million on various activities um, against that particular uh, proposed deal um, involving lobbying senators, getting especially Democrat senators uh, to vote against that piece of legislation. Um, in 2020, you want an example of them lobbying over legislation? Uh, it's sometimes nice to find a different example uh, with an, uh, an interest example to point to an essay. It stands out as long as it's right. So in 2020, uh, Tammy Duckworth, which is a great name, I think, she is the senator for Illinois. She introduced into the Senate a bill called the Friendly Airports for Mothers Improvement Act. What this basically was, is to allow things like facilities in small airports, things like breastfeeding of children and all those sorts of things. And a pressure group which really championed this uh, was the US Breastfeeding Committee. Um, so they really championed this piece of legislation. Um, I couldn't find out all the ins and outs, but I'm pretty sure they must have been involved in lobbying of other senators to approve this piece of legislation and also House members in the House of Representatives. It did become law in 2020.